Welcome to DOS Geek. I've been asked a couple times how I customize my XFCE. You guys know I've fallen in love with XFCE. It's my favorite desktop environment, bar none right now. And so, you know, people are starting to take a look and they're starting to see how awesome it is. And every once in a while, I'll get a question on there of how I customize XFCE. Now, I really didn't want to make a video on this because I don't think I do anything that spectacular but I will still show you what I do anyways. And if you learn something from it or even more awesome, if you can share something, uh, another tip or trick that you do in XFC, if you already use it or something that you found out, leave that down in the comments below. So first things first, let's get some installation out of the way. So if we were doing a base XFCE Zubuntu install here, the things that I would do is this, and this will be in the description below. So you don't have to try to stare at the screen and um, figure out what these actually say, but sudo add apt repository papyrus because I want that papyrus icon theme. That's the icons that you see up here. I love the way papyrus looks, so that's how we get that PPA in there. And then you could do the sudo apt install papyrus icon theme there. So you'll see that once you add that PPA. The other thing is sudo apt to get install XFCE4 goodies, and this is going to give you a bunch of you know, additional options for plugins that you can add to your panels and panels being the biggest thing here with XFCE. Really the biggest thing is you can right click anywhere and customize anything, but adding panels is one of the cooler things that you can do. So you can see, basically I've made a panel up here, which I use as a dock. So I don't have a separate dock program I installed. I just used one of their panels as a dock. I have kind of a notifications and settings dock up here. So if I need to switch sound, or anything very quickly, I've got that option. I have some additional icons like Dropbox and of course, you know, the ability to lock screen log out over here. I have some quick launch icons and directory menu information over here. And of course the whisker menu. So the reason why you'll see a lot of things kind of repeat in different areas is if I have multiple programs open, I don't want a window blocking or trying to figure out how to move things or rearrange to get to something I need to. Let's say, for instance, I'm doing some video editing and I need to change the sound. I have the ability to change sound in multiple areas on my screen and I do that purposely. That may not be good for you. You may hate that workflow. You may be one of those individuals that want everything as simple as possible. And you could certainly do that with XFC. You can do whatever you want. Uh, that's just why you see sometimes I have icons that repeat in certain places. So adding a panel is very easy. We're going to go down here to the panel section. We're going to go to panel and we can go to panel preferences here. And you can see we have panel zero, which is always, this is our first panel. And you can see it highlights in that red dotted line. I could go to panel one and this is my panel one up here. Again, you see the red dotted line once I select it. And we could go to panel two, and this is my dock here. Now within these panels, you can make all kinds of changes. You could have a background to it. You can make them big, you can make them small. So if we wanted to change the road size here, we could to whatever we felt was a good row size for our dock. You can add multiple rows in here. If you want multiple road panels, for instance, that might be something you want over in the corner and then you could shrink it down. Just endless options and of course we can change the length here if we want it to run all the way across the monitor or in this case how how big we want it and i have it automatically increased based on the amount of icons that i have in there then you've got your appearance this is where i have it fully alpha but of course i can change the color or use a solid color here or background color um, if i wanted to we could go like maybe with a gray uh, just to show you how that can be done or I can just do none and use the system color and go completely alpha on the dock, which I like. And then your opacity when you enter it and when you leave, and then the items that you have on your dock here, these are your plugins. So you can add additional things here. You just click that plus sign where you could remove items as well and you could pick something. So once you do that XFCE4 goodies, you're gonna have some extra plugins here that you can add like timers in there. Um, the Waveland, the system monitor, sensor plugins, the pulse audio plugin uh, for switching sound, places, etc. You can add in all of these launchers, and that's what these individual icons are here that you see. So, that is how you add things to your panels. And of course, if you want a new panel, 
you would just click the plus sign here and now we have a new panel and we can drag that wherever we want and we can also do things like if we have a dock where we want it to automatically hide if you choose always it's literally always going to be hidden until you move your cursor to the area that it's at kind of like a hot corner but intelligently is great because it only hides if a window goes over it of course the window right now i'm showing you is the, the panel settings but if a window goes over it, it'll go away and that's what i use for my dock i set it to intelligent so if i decide i don't want that panel anymore i could just get rid of it and it's gone and now i just have my three panels that i use and of course the hot cuts here now another thing you can do to try to keep this organized is you can might be able to see in the bottom corner here there's a separator so you can add separator here's another one here you can add separators in um, to organize different areas within your panels and they'll have just basically it's just a horizontal separator in there we could even add a separator here if we wanted to and so we could have different programs basically separated by categories and then what I what's easy to do is just select something and then click move and then you can move it you see the red line we can move it anywhere we want so if we want to separate different programs within our dock we could set up a separator there we could set up separators down here you could put them anywhere you want so that's just another option of organizing if you decide you do not like it of course then you could just go and remove it and it's gone that's why I love XFCE. Everything is super easy. Even if you want to just mess with a clock, you know, a lot of times if you're messing with a clock in other desktop environments, you may have to go through the settings panel or whatnot. Well, here, just go to properties. Now I can change the type of clock that I have. If I want it analog, if I want it digital, and then I can make it the 24 hour format or 12 hour format or 24 hour format, change the settings here and I'm done. I don't have to go hunt for any additional settings panels or anything else you could just do everything you want right there so uh, changing your wallpaper is super simple i have wallpapers set up on the dos geek community site so we can go check that out here and if you want one of these you may be like i would never put that on my computer ever and that's okay but if you happen to want one if you just happen to want one here you go so you can go to the wallpapers here and you've got this wallpaper I'm showing. XFC is always a good idea. I actually stole this from Adobe Spark. Well, I didn't steal it. It was an Adobe Spark template for creating your own wallpaper. And they allowed you one free item. And this was kind of, they had a different saying. They didn't have XFC up here, but something is always a good idea. And then I just changed it to XFCE. My creativity, just overwhelming, I know. Um, you've got the Das Geek kind of, um, what do we call this, urban print here. This is a favorite of a lot of people. The first get your facts straight, then distort them as you please. XFCE, fill your brains, wallpaper. I have some Manjaro paper, Ubuntu Studio. So I put wallpapers out there for, you know, anything that I create and do a video on. I'll usually throw up uh, on the site so you can go check those out if you wanted to get the same wallpaper or make your own. But it's as simple as you find a picture uh, in your file manager, then you right click it and you click set as wallpaper. I mean, so if you want this as your wallpaper, you right click set as wallpaper. Boom. Now you've got the XFCE base template there. That's how easy everything is. Okay. So what are some other things we can do? Uh, well, we downloaded the papyrus icon theme already. So now we want to change. Uh, our icons there so let's get into our, our icon change and here under appearance and icons is where you would go once you have that installed and select the papyrus one so you've got a couple different options here depending on what you want we can go papyrus light we can go papyrus dark and you can see it's kind of changing those a little bit there and of course if you change a completely different icon set like oxygen you're going to see completely different icons changing up here so we could go with gnome humanity whichever one speaks to you i personally like papyrus adapta i think it looks solid so that's how you would change that of course you can change your styles as well if you like the basic gray beard there if you like the oxygen uh, more of a clean cut look um, gtk theme there Arawada. I believe Graybird is your default um, option there. So in any case, that is how 
you can change those. Windows Manager Tweaks is another awesome tool here. So you can change IP options like how you cycle through your workspaces, how things focus when they are behind or in front of a window, accessibility, workplaces, you know, you can use your mouse wheel to switch them. Remember and recall previous wrap workspaces placement, but compositor is probably one of the most important areas you can go to. Sometimes what you'll see is a black horizontal bar that will show up uh, across your computer, depending on the GPU you have and the drivers you're using, etc. You can get rid of that by basically show shadows under dock windows, taking that off show shadows under pop-up windows if you still see it and that will remove that um, additionally you have the opacity of the windows decorations so these borders around you can see i have the opacity there tweaked up if i move that down look at the top of window manager tweaks and how that changes so if you want that to be very visible or you want it to be very opaque you can change that there uh, to your liking so compositor is a really cool tool and i like to keep it kind of opaque there um, to set up kind of clear see-through uh, for my setup. Next thing we will talk about is the Thunar file manager here. So we'll go down to the file manager and I, of course, sometimes you want to see hidden files. Thunar is a fantastic file manager, so you could do that there. You could go under preferences as well and show thumbnails. I always switch to always instead of local files only. That way when I'm viewing pictures and videos and things on a networked drive, I can still see those thumbnails. You can do text beside the thumbnails there if you want instead of underneath. It just depends on how you like to see it. And then we can also go to the side pane. We can make the icons a little bigger if you like the icons and you see how they're changing over here or we could keep them at very small. It's just your preference there. And then the tree pane, same thing. We can change that to our liking. Single click to activate items. That's what Rocco loves. I like double clicking. I'm old school like that. So um, that's how I have that set up. So this there are some ways you can customize the Thunar Manager. So we've shown you how to add panels. We've shown you how to add all the different icons and items to those panels. Very simple. Uh, another thing that's very cool is you can see I've created a URL link. You can right click and do create a URL link and basically type the name, a comment, the URL and pick your own icon for that basic launcher for a web app like Google Drive. You can also open Firefox, create a bookmark and just drag that bookmark onto your desktop or into a panel. And that will create a quick, quick launcher for something like an Office 365 whatever it is, and you could set your own icon to that, obviously, so it's a quick link to whatever tools you have that are online only. Additionally, within the Whisker menu, you can change the icon. I forgot to mention this. So once you click on that icon there, of course, you can adjust the icons for anything you want. You could choose something different. I think the default looks more like this. I changed it to just, or maybe it's this, changed it just to the black uh, mouse there, but you can change your icons. You can change the title uh, for the application menu. You can change the background opacity of your menu. You can also just click right here and make your menu whatever size. You can make it long. You can make it horizontal. I mean, this is XFCE. This is what makes XFCE amazing. It's whatever you want, whatever you imagine to set up, it is fully capable of doing. The next thing we'll talk about is XF Dashboard. XF Dashboard is something if you are used to a GNOME-like launcher or environment, you like that screen coming up to show you the icons and programs that you have installed, XF Dashboard is something that you can install to get that. It's not something personally that I love, uh, but I know folks like Rocco from Big Daddy Linux channel loves that GNOME splash page. XF Dashboard is an awesome way to do that. And you could create that as a launcher anywhere so that it launches here. And you've got your listing of icons and applications. And of course, you can customize some of that. So a lot of people like XF Dashboard there as well uh, to utilize for that. So that's how I customize my XFCE when I do a new install. Like I said, I don't really do anything super fancy, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you have some tips of your own 
that you can give to me of cool things that we can do. I know this using a panel as a dock instead of a third party app was from the community. One of you guys told me, why are you installing a separate dock? You could just make your own. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess you can. That makes sense. So that's it. I hope you guys have a fantastic Thanksgiving and to get lots of food to fill your brains with.